good, beautiful morning to my Live Source Church family. How are you all today? Good. Are you in the mood to worship? Amen. Let's get started. song just ministers to my heart every time I hear it. Now, how many of you guys wondered, hmm, I wonder if we'll sing today. I wonder if the praise team will be here. No one, right? Because they're here every week. So let's just praise the Lord. Give them a round of applause. I appreciate their faithfulness. And we are excited that you are here today. Now, it's because you don't all have air conditioning, so you thought, oh, let's go to church today. Because <laughs> they do. <laughs> It certainly feels good. I'm appreciative of the air conditioning. Well, we are excited that you're here on site or online, and uh, we're excited that you're a part of our worship service today. A couple of things going on. Uh, Life Source U classes, they're going strong, and they should be, there's no delays until we finish. So just so you know that. So the, the offerings are differences that matter, comparing key beliefs in non-Christian world cultures and religions in the foyer. Uh, ladies study Fruit of the Spirit in the library, and then men's study belonging to a family of families in the intern's old office. I, we need to call it something else, right? So we will at some point, but right now that's what it's called. Uh, Discovering Life Source Church. Now, this is one of those things where if you've been just kind of hanging around here and trying to figure out what is this all about, how do I get a little bit more involved, or how do I get to know a little bit more? Um, I know for me, when, when I've gone to this type of a event, um, we met friends that became lifelong friends at Discovering Life Source because, well, it was a different day then, but anyway, let's not go down that road. 
but you get to know people on a different level. They're kind of in the same place as you, and you can create some great friendships there. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, more importantly, to know more about the church and becoming more of a part of that, today, following Life Source U, you can talk to Pastor Graham uh, if you haven't signed up, and he'll get you everything you need to be a part of that. Lunch is included, um, and so make sure you just talk to him after that. One other thing that's going on, Ladies Brunch, Saturday, June 18th from 9 to 11 a.m. Uh, they're going to enjoy a variety of breakfast foods, have a time to connect. Uh, you're asked to bring a breakfast dish to share with the group. And then there will be a devotion uh, from the Word that will happen there. And from out of here, that's you, Judy Pelletier, our, today our bassist. Sometimes she does other stuff. So kind of cool. Another thing that we can do is we can worship the Lord with our giving. Uh, it's an important part uh, because we get to see what God will do through us here at Life Source. Because to me, the most important, of our, important part of our giving, there we go, I'm getting ahead of myself in my head, is what we can do for ministry, how we can reach the community, how we can get out there. And as that happens, uh, we're able to do more, you're able to do more, and be a part of it. And that's, that happens through giving. And so the most important part and thing that you can do is pray. Pray that the funds will come in. Um, you know, the Lord is leading through our pastor to get into the community, to do different events that will bring the gospel to our community. And so we need to be supportive of that. Um, if, you, if that's exciting to you and you want to see what we can do as a body, get involved. As far as giving, you can do it three ways today. On site, you can use the boxes at each of the doors. Um, if you're new to giving, uh, there are giving envelopes in the seat backs. Put your full name if you want a receipt, and you can use those boxes there. Uh, online, you go to ls.church, click the Give button, and if you want to make it easy, you can click Recurring, and it'll happen every week based on whatever total you put in there. Or you can do Text to Give, text the dollar amount you want to donate to 84321. And if it's the first time doing that, you'll have to choose Life Source Church as your option, and then it will become a regular part of that text to give kind of a thing. All of the business is out of the way. Now we get to worship. All right? So pray with me as we continue to worship the Lord. Father, as we come before you today, uh, we are so thankful for things that are going on here, things that are furthering the kingdom of God. And, Lord, we ask that each of these things that are happening here, Lord, that we would be not only a part of, but we would invite others into it to become a part of it with us so that your word is taught and your truth is going out into this world, a very dark, dark world that needs your light. We're thankful, Lord, for this time together that we can enjoy our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can reconnect, that we can recharge as we come here. We pray, Father, that as we sing, that that will help put aside all the things that are a distraction for us today. That, it, that way we will be prepared to hear from your word. Father, that you would speak through our pastor with boldness and power and might. Lord, that our hearts would be open and receptive to hear what you have to say to us today, Lord. There is something in every message for every single person in this room. We praise you, we thank you, and we lift your name high this morning. And it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. All right, let's continue. You know, one thing that is so important for us to remember on a regular basis, I mean, minute by minute, is that the Lord loves us, right? He is jealous for me.
things you're going to have all year. <laughs> you know, each Sunday morning when I'm doing this, I like to sometimes whip up a quick scripture verse. We can go ahead and start, Dave. And, um, you know, something that's going to lead us into that next song. And, of course, I was too busy chatting, and we had a long rehearsal this morning because we have lots of music for you today. But... Um, so our next song is about the greatness of God. And of course, if you just, you know, Google <laughs> scripture verses about the greatness of God, there's a lot of them because the whole Bible is about the greatness of God, right? All right. The splendor of the King Cold in majesty let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. great Lord indeed. Amen.
So the Patriots, New England Patriots, have had an extremely long run of success, right? Uh, and, and one of the reasons for that's attributed is what they call the Patriot way. You know, and it's, it's do your job, right? Everything that you do, work hard, pay attention, do your job. And if everybody does their job, they have a high likelihood of success. And so they have in their facility, every time a player or a coach enters the facility, they have things there to remind them of the Patriot way. That when you walk in this building, remember the Patriot way. As they leave the building, same thing. Remember the Patriot way. Well, the Jewish people did something similar to this. It, it wasn't Bill Belichick's idea, see. Uh, the Jewish people used to have, they would mount on their doorpost the, um, a copy of the Shema, which is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, you know. And they have that. And so every time they would leave the house, they would be reminded that God is, he's my God, and all I needed to live this way. And every time they would come back in, it would remind them as well. So the reminder is there. Well, you know what? God has in place something for us that is way bigger than any of that. Something that if you and I get a hold of will change how we see our lives, will change how we see the world in a way that really works for us as Christians. All right? So uh, let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 8. And I forgot to check the page number on the, the one in the pews, the pews, the chairs there. Uh, but it's, it's after 617. I know that because last week was 617. So. Psalm chapter 8 says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, we come to you and ask you to keep your promise to us, which we confident you will that your spirit would take your word and would speak to us and, and uh, cause us to be able to see you more clearly to understand what your word means in our lives that you might be honored and glorified in the response of our hearts here today i pray in jesus name amen oh lord our lord how excellent is your name where in all the earth. That's right. And so what God has given us is not um, a sign that says the Christian way that we touch on in our house or, or a little copy of the scriptures that we can touch. God has given us the whole world. The whole world to remind us of him. And when you start thinking, oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Have you ever? How many of you have been to the Grand Canyon? Okay, several of you. There, I've been a few times, but still, the last time I went, you know, I, you, it's, it's, you drive up and you kind of see a little bit, little bit, but then you finally you walk up to the edge and you look out and it's just like, I, really, it, it's kind of speechless. The awesomeness of that. And our world is filled with things like that. Not always huge like that, but, but small. That, that the Lord can be seen in these things. When I say the Lord can be seen in these things, let me be really clear that we're not talking about um, Eastern mysticism where what they believe is what's called pantheism. Pan meaning all and theism God. They're saying all is God. They would say that the Grand Canyon is God. 
God is in that, and he, it's God and, and the flowers and the, everything, that God is everything. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that in everything, you can see the handiwork of God. You can see his excellence in all of creation. And, and you don't have to go to the Grand Canyon to see it. You know, all you got to do is come to my backyard. Let me show you something. So it was a beautiful morning today. And I got around, I was able to sit on my deck at my backyard. And, and just let me share, so I'm thinking how, you know, I can see the, the uh, reality and excellence of God in my backyard. In fact, let's go ahead and go to that uh, next slide, if you would, for a little bit there. Let me talk about this. Okay. What we need to do is learn to recognize the reality and the excellence of God in the world around you. So that everywhere you look and everywhere, everything that you see points you to the Lord and reminds you of the Lord's presence in your life. It's going to do, uh, well, before I do that, let me just talk to you about my backyard. <laughs> you can, because I see the reality and the excellence of God in my backyard. It's, it's awesome. Start off with, I, I, I'm right around the corner here, and uh, my backyard then butts up against the church's property, and there is trees, full of trees, Right? Many huge trees to small trees, all reaching skyward. Uh, and there's this beautiful contrast of the greens into the browns and the grays in the, uh, the tree trunks. And, and you look at the bark, man, I, uh, this tough, tough exterior that's protecting the life that's going on inside. And unique, interesting patterns in the bark. And, and, and when I talked about the shades of green, we are talking hundreds, maybe thousands of shades of green. It's amazing. Different leaf shapes. And in those leaves, as the sun comes up and begins to shine on those leaves, the, the process of photosynthesis takes place, this chemical reaction that the tree does. And in the process, it scrubs our air for us. It cleans up our air and it produces oxygen. And by the way, I just you know, did a quick search. Large oak trees, like I got in my backyard, which I love those trees until the fall when the acorns come down and the leaves. But anyway, they are amazing. But you know, a large oak will move up to 100 gallons of water up through it in a day. That's going on as I sit there in my backyard and look at it, right? I, I don't see it, but I know it's happening. And, then, and so this is beauty and there's design and, and just seeing that. The birds. Man, are there a bunch of different kinds of birds. They're the unique, each one, um, you know, different sizes and, and somewhat different shapes. Uh, they each one have their own sounds. We call them songs. The birds sing their songs. But I listen. It doesn't sound very much like songs. But it does sound beautiful. I mean, all different kinds all around me out there. And the bones and birds. Think about this. Now, I haven't taken any birds apart to find this out. I trust other people. Their bones, their main limbs are hollow with very struts in there to reinforce them. They are extremely strong and extremely light, which the bird needs to be able to fly. I don't think that happened by accident, do you? Okay. Uh, very strong, very light bones for flight. And, and I am amazed that woodpeckers don't die. You know what I mean? Or not? I, at least walk around like out of it. Because there, was, out there was a couple of them out there today. I can hear them in the woods. You know. Why don't you try, you know, go find a piece of wood and bang your face on it a few times. But it's amazing it, it do that. And, and also a woodpecker, if you were state, has this long tongue and it has these channels that it swirls in and out all around its head because it hits the hole and then it sticks that tongue out and back to try to get whatever it's looking for. Somehow birds know, quote, know how to make a nest. First they know to make a nest, how to make it, and then they, they know somehow rather to stay with the eggs until they hatch and they know somehow to feed the baby birds. And so maybe we ought to change it, not call somebody, you bird brain. Very, very small brains, right? And yet they, God has made them to know. 
And then the bugs. Sometimes we don't like the bugs. I, I, I found this. Uh, they're an average, and, and some people say, some scientists say a lot more, but they're an average of over 120 million bugs per acre. That's going down like six inches, right, in the ground. Lots of little tiny bugs. That means there's 20 million in my backyard. I've got to put that out of my mind when I try to go to sleep at night. <laughs> All different shapes and sizes of bugs. They keep the whole ecosystem running, though. Right? These bugs, they're food for the birds and they're food for each other. They process the soil and make it good. They collect, in essence, they're garbage like collectors and processors. They do that. Uh, multiple other functions. And, and really, there is no life as we know it without bugs. Okay? Uh, the average black ant, the little black ant, moves very quickly. And I, have, I sit out at my table, and the ants inevitably want to come over and walk across my Bible and my journal or whatever, and I, I, I kind of put my finger down and try to get them away. And, and all of a sudden, sometimes I blow on them. Do they scurry? Anyway, so listen. Um, if the ant was our size... And he takes off like that, he'd be moving 45 to 60 miles an hour relative to his body size. And if I was in, well, here, an ant can carry 50 times their body weight in their jaws. So if that was me, I could go over into a bulldozer and go, <laughs> and pick it up. That's what we're talking about. And all of this intertwined with each other and the plants and everything, this whole ecosystem that works together. You pull any part out of it and it doesn't work the way it should anymore. And then the sun, like I said, the sun, the beauty as it spreads through the trees and across the yard. And, and the sun is the engine that provides the energy that powers all of the earth, uh, you know, all the earth systems that enables us to see and to see gloriously. And it just happens to be an average of 93 million miles away, the perfect distance for everything that it does for the earth and for us. And then, believe it or not, I'm sitting out there, my body is out there, my body. The psalmist says, when he looks at his body, he says, boy, God, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It, it is just amazing. We don't even have time to go into it, but you think about your eyes and everything that has to happen there for you to be able to see. Uh, and then the reality is that your brain, your eyes don't really see. It's your brain that sees. I mean, it's, it's wild. You have 11 different major organ systems, all very detailed, all very complex, all working the way that they're supposed to, to keep you alive, able to do what you need. And the chemistry of this is all mind-boggling. You get down to the cell level and you think it'd be very simple, but it's not. It's very, very complex. And everything has to be in place for it to work. And, and so I say, how excellent is your name in all the earth, right? Starting in my backyard. And way beyond my backyard. But so we can see, and we can learn to see that way. And we ought to learn to see that way, to see the world around us. Uh, so let's continue to look at the psalm here. He says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. So we need to learn to recognize the reality and excellence of God in the world around us. And this will affect how you think about God. It'll, as you ponder these things and look and see, it will start to shape how you think about God. Wow, wow God paid attention to that detail. Wow, God was able to do that. God understood how this all worked together before he ever even made it. I mean, it's going to begin to change your perspective on God and what he's like and what he's capable of. What he's capable of in your life. Okay? And it will also affect then how you make your decisions. Because obviously as you begin to see the world differently, guess what? You'll make decisions differently. Okay? And, and so that is good and that means it's going to affect the course of your life. Because as you make decisions, in fact, your life is, is really the sum total of all your decisions, isn't it? Largely. And so as you begin to see God in all of it, see his handiwork, see the excellence of his name everywhere you look, man, you're going to make 
end up making different decisions and it's going to affect your life for good. It's like we talked about last week. If you delight in the law of the Lord, and it's going to change your life for good. Um, when we think about this idea of how you think about God, uh, Psalm number 10 in verse 4. In fact, why don't you just turn over there. Let's take a quick look. It's right next door. Verse 4 says, The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. The wicked in his proud uh, countenance does not seek God. And then this phrase, God is in none of his thoughts. Okay, the wicked person, the one who does not love God. God is not in his thoughts. It's, it's interesting. The, uh, um, in the marginal reading of the King James, it says, all his thoughts are, there is no God. It's interesting to me, the, the, the old King James translated it this way. It said that God is not in all his thoughts. And I really, I, I, that gives me a little different sense about it. And, and I have this, this feeling that the idea is that God ought to be in how many of my thoughts? All. Now, that doesn't mean we're always consciously thinking of him, but God has sh shaped all of my thoughts. See, he's, he's a part of all of my thoughts. The reason I'm thinking this way is because of, and that's where we want to move toward. And, and it is, it's a, that is a target to go for, okay? It doesn't come to us naturally. But the opposite is not having God in all our thoughts or having him in none of our thoughts. And so this is an antidote to the, the sin nature that we were born with, beginning to see the, excel, the reality and the excellence of God in the world around us. So let's continue uh, here. Verse 1, we've said, okay, oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. He set your glory above the heavens. So what does this word glory mean? It's interesting. It's, it's a, the word that you usually find talking about glory and God's glory is a different word in the Hebrew language. Uh, it has still largely the same kind of meaning, that the word means heaviness, weightiness, uh, brightness. In other words, wow, if you see God's glory, it does this to you. Oh. All right? And this is a different word here. Uh, and what this word means is splendor, majesty, grandeur. And so the psalmist is saying, you have set your splendor, God. Let me just stop just a moment. Does there seem to be any splendor in the world around you? Is there any splendor in the world around you? I know sometimes we just go through life like this. We want to quit that, okay? Yes. Is there any majesty to be seen? Yes. yes. Any grandeur? Yes. You know, I mean, if you are... Next time you have, we have a big thunderstorm or a huge hurricane that comes through, go stand outside for a little while. And probably you'll say, I think I want to go inside. <laughs> But the power that's there, right? The bigness, the, uh, this glory that he has put. And, and so we see all this in creation. And the psalmist says here, hey, God, your majesty, your splendor, your grandeur is above all of that. Well, how can we see that? We can't really see that directly, can we? We can see it in his word. But then we can see it in his creation because it's pointing us to that. And so everything is under his glory. Everything is overshadowed by his glory. And so we should have this reminder that all of creation is about God. Let that soak in. Go ahead and go to that if you would, Eduardo. All of creation is about God. Really. The, uh, what is it, probably four or five hundred years ago, the, the, the writers, and, and probably before that, but the writers who were writing about God's revelation to us, they were, when they were really saying, hey, the word of God is God's revolution, a, a revelation to us. It is revolutionary as well in our lives. Uh, that this is God's revelation, and, but that there's another book that God has written. And it is the book of creation. 
that there are things in creation that we can see that creation points us to God. We need the word of God because the creation doesn't reveal all these details that we need. But creation points us to God. Now creation has, a, think about this. When you look at creation, you really stop and take the time to look at it and let it soak in. And we see it is glorious, isn't it? There is majesty there. There's so many intriguing things there when you start to think about how it all works. On and on it goes. Do you understand that what you're seeing has been damaged by sin? You're seeing the damaged version. What will it be like when God restores it? That's going to be amazing. But anyway, so it has affected, creation has been affected by sin, but it's, it's still more glorious, I think, than we have a clue. And so when we see creation as being about God, it's no more I just see it and go, oh, yeah, huh, whatever. No, it's, wait a minute. God had a hand in this. It's going to have a powerful and direct effect on us. It's going to point us to him. Okay? That's always a good thing in your life when you get pointed to the Lord. All right? That's what creation is going to do. It's going to teach you about him. It's going to teach you about his power, his glory, his glory, his creativity, his mind, his brain, his intelligence. I mean, it's going to teach you about him. It's going to encourage you to engage with him. Anybody besides me ever find yourself in life because of what's happening, uh, the circumstances, what someone is saying or doing, or what the stupid stuff that you did, or what, and you just get discouraged, right? Okay. I cannot tell you how just getting outside and looking around and seeing the excellence of God in creation refreshes. And, and reminds me to engage with God. Engage with him. Don't, don't pull away here. Engage with him. And then it will also encourage us to wholeheartedly then go all in with him. Because i got to tell you, as you, you think about creation and how it works and how it all works together and how big it is. We're going to talk big in a little while. All of that kind of stuff. You think God might know better than us? Okay, so it's reminding me, when I start seeing it, this it starts reminding me, go all in with God. He knows what he's doing. Go all in with him. And so all of creation is about God. So let's talk about just a couple things that this, the passage brings here about this God creation and us connection. Okay? God creation and us, this connection. And the first one we see in verse 2. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. And so he's talking about, obviously, the, Satan is God's enemy. He does not want God to be glorified. And yet, the most powerful, the greatest power that Satan might have can't even overcome the glory of God seen in the weakest of us. That is the message. That's what's being spoken from the babies and the infants. Now, let, let's talk about this. Would you put the pictures up here? I, I, I get to choose which pictures I put up here. These are my youngest grandchildren, okay? Babes, infants, small children. Now, how do we look into the faces of these little ones and not see the glory of God? Right? You interact with them, right? How many get that? You see that with upset with kids, right? Some of you say, I don't know kids. They drool, they... They smell, they, yeah, and they do all that. But there are times you just look, and it's just overwhelming. It really is overwhelming. And, and, and he's saying here that the message that comes from that, has, it's going to shut the mouth of the enemy. Now, this is important for us to understand. I mean, but my idea is, excuse me, when I, when I look in the little eyes of the little one, and before I got married and had kids, yeah, kids, yeah, okay. those of you who have children. Do you remember looking into the eyes of your child back in the beginning? I can't say I remember the specific time, but I can tell you what it did to me. And especially in this issue, I look at this child and I say, there must be a God. Don't
Don't you know Satan hates that? Satan hates that. And so guess what he does? He goes to war against it. He goes to war against children. Satan wants nothing good for children. He wants, he, he wants to destroy them. And he has worked relentlessly against these things. The, the thing, first thing he's trying to do is devalue what, what children, or the value of children, devalue them. So people say, well, I don't want kids, you know? And they're, oh, wait, maybe you don't understand. I'm not saying everybody has to kid, have the kids or there's, all I'm saying is in our culture, he has tried to devalue children, okay? And if he can't devalue them and they are actually conceived, what does he want to do? Let's end that. Let's kill that child before it's born and before it can grow up and show the, the glory of God. And then after they're born, he goes after them. And, and children are damaged every day because of the sinfulness of people around them. Right? And he stirs that up and wants it to happen. Some of you, some of you have been here and you have been hurt terribly by adults in your life when you were young. So let me encourage you that God is there for you. He will work in your life and he will redeem those things. Okay? But so Satan goes to war against that and not just against children. He goes to war against, I believe, you know, the, the, what was the last thing that God created? No! Woman. And I know you meant man. Yes, you're right. It's mankind. You're right. It's mankind. You know, see his face up here. He's like really stumped. Okay. But it was Eve, right? It was woman. And I would say to you that I, I think woman is God's crowning creation. I really do. Um, Satan hates women. He wants to tear you down. He wants you to believe lies. He, he wants to bring harm into your life in whatever way he can. He hates women. Especially he hates the woman who wants to be full-blown, uh, express the femininity that God designed in the women. And that's not just one thing. That's a broad thing and it's personality. But there's a femininity that comes with a woman that is glorious. Satan hates it. He goes to war against it. He devalues them as a woman. And the uh, same thing for a man who wants to live out being a man. I want to live out masculinity. And once again, that looks different for different people. But I, I want to be a man the way God designed me to be. Satan hates it when men want to be that way. Now you think about this. He goes to war against it. And in our culture, what is one of the major areas of confusion right now? Gender. Gender. That's right. See, but this is because Satan hates these, because these things show the glory of God. Of course, this is out of this idea of, of children, babes doing this, okay? So babies and small children powerfully portray God's reality and glory. If, if you learn to see it, it will change you, shape you, and it will motivate you to look to God and see his glory at work. Let's read on. Verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained... What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him, that, that you have anything to do with us? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Psalms 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. And the idea of the heavens, that's everything that we can see. And when he uses the word firmament, it means as we look up and we see, you know, what we're seeing up there is called the firmament. This is where we see the clouds. This is where we see the stars and the moon and uh, everything that we can see. And creation compared to you and I is massive. In fact, let's, let's just watch. We have about a five-minute video to show. If you take the lights down and then show the video, okay? About five minutes. Go ahead and take these lights down if you would.
are all the things in space. Except for this. That's only the part we can see. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. That we, 
How small are we? And yet, the God of this universe knew us, loved us, knows us, loves us, became a human being that he might be able to redeem us, save us from our sins, dying in our place, rising again, coming to live within us. The God of that universe will come to live within you when you receive Jesus as Savior. Let me say, if you have any questions about it, please talk to me after. I'd love to talk with you about that. Who are we? And then he goes on, and basically he says that God has given us the responsibility of managing all of creation for him. And we do that by surrendering to him, growing to be like him, telling others about him. So let me just really encourage you, challenge you here today. Learn to recognize the reality and excellence of God in the world around you. Do it. It'll change your life. Change your life. I'm going to ask our band to come on up again if they would. We want to finish today. Singing the, the first words of the song are majesty and glory, the words can't describe. They just can't. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will uh, finish up our worship by singing to him here today. Father, we come to you and thank you for your word and th that you have revealed yourself, Lord, in all of creation. Help us to learn to see it and be reminded of it and be moved by it, shaped, motivated by it, Lord. We want that we be able to show forth your glory in our lives as part of that creation. And Lord, we know that we will experience the greatest blessings as we do these things. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's stand up. Close our service out today, continuing to worship. Let these lyrics just really touch you. Majesty and glory, the words fail to describe. Expanses of the heaven that have never met an eye. Wonder fills this worshiper with unreserved delight.
imitate your holiness that all may see the light. May your name be lifted high. Our service is over. Go enjoy the world and God's creation. Be kind. Serve one another. Love one another. Amen.